हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द वीडियो सीरीज ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्ट ओरिएंटेड प्रोग्रामिंग विद द जावा और टुडेस टॉपिक दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो दैट इज व्हाट इज जीवीएम व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट डेटा टाइप इन द जावा व्हाट आर द ऑपरेटर इन द जावा एंड लास्टली आई विल एक्सप्लेन यू हाउ टू रन द सिंपल जावा प्रोग्राम I am a instructor, Mr. Ankit Patel. So let's start with the our today's outline. So what are the outline for the today's lecture? The first one that is the JVM. That is nothing but the Java Virtual Machine. Next, that is a data type in the Java, operator in the Java, and last, simple Java program. How to run the simple Java program? Now let's start with the JVM. That is our first topic of today's lecture. What do you mean by the JVM? It is nothing but a Java Virtual Machine. So, what is the use of the Java Virtual Machine? So, first of all, what is the role of the Java Machine? So, Java Virtual Machine is an abstract machine, and it is a specification that provides the runtime environment in which the Java byte code can be executed. So, JVM is a one of the actually called the main method present in the java code so in every java code there is a one main method so that main method is called by the jvm jvm is a part of the gr so gr is a java runtime environment so let's explain with the, uh, what is the exact function of the jvm so the function of the jvm this figure is i have already explained in my last lecture that how the our high level code of the java is converted in the form of the output so firstly the role in the java i have already told you that it use both the compiler and interpreter so what is the use of the compiler and interpreter so first our high level program that will be compiled and it will converted into the in the form of the byte code so that is the role of the compiler now this byte code now it is the input to the jvm and finally jvm jvm will produce the output so the whole figure tells like ki how our high level code of the java is converted in the form of the output and what is the role of the jvm in our program here the next topic in the java that is the data type in the java so what are the different data type available in the java and what is the use of the data type so in a program whenever you want to use a different different value then you can use a different different data type suppose suppose in a program suppose you want to use a integer value then you can use a integer data type same suppose if you want to use a character in a program then just use a character data type and see for the if you want to use a floating point value then you can use a float data type so here uh, there are the different data type available in the java the first one that is the byte data type here the byte sort and integer are the similar data type for the integer value but the only difference between these three is the range and the size of the data type here the byte value size is a one byte similarly for the sort the size is a two byte and for integer it is a four byte data type again the range only difference is the range of this three data type the floating point point value again you have the three option either you can use a float as a data type double or you can use a long here the long is also used for the integer data type but for the floating point you have only two option like float and the double so for the floating point value the size of the float data type uh, that is a four byte and the size of the double that is a eight data, eight byte so whenever the value you require floating point you can use a float as a data type our next data type that is the boolean data type so for boolean value this is a new data type in java for boolean value if you have only a two value like true and false so whenever the expression like relational operator we are using suppose if you want uh, the return values in the form of the true and false so at that time you can use a boolean data type so boolean data type it will store only the value in the form of true and false either zero or one and the last one that is the character data type so here the character data type it is used for the character value and its size is a two byte 
So these all are the different different data type available in the Java. So next topic that is the operator in the Java. So what are the different operator available in the Java? Uh, these are the the first operator that is a unary operator. All these operator mostly are similar to the C and C++. So if you have some knowledge about the C language and C++, the operator you can see almost operator are the same. Like if you are talking about the unary operator, so in unary operator there are the two operator uh, you are using that prefix and postfix and plus plus sign and minus minus sign. So whenever uh, what is the use of the plus plus operator, you are incrementing the by one. And whenever you are using the minus minus operator, unary operator, you are decrementing the value by the one. Suppose if you are writing like a plus plus, and the value of a is five. Then after the a plus plus, the value become six. So the a plus plus that is similar to the a is equals to a plus one. Now next operator that is the arithmetic operator, and we can use all the arithmetic function with these. This particular operator, like if you are talking about the addition, if you are talking about the multiplication, division, subtraction, and obviously the modulo function. The use of the modulo function is it calculates the remainder of the when you are dividing the something. Now next operator that is a shift operator. Now shift there are the again two types of shift operator. The shift operator is logically uh, left shift and the right shift. So left shift and right shift. What is the use of this uh, operator? You are shifting bit value in left side one bit, or if you are using the right shift operator, that you are shifting the one bit value to the right side. So that is the use of the shift operator. And the another one operator that is a relational operator. Then if you want to comparison and if you want to check the equality between the value of the two variable, then you can use this relational operator. If you want to check the relation between these two operator, then you can use this relational operator. So uh, there are the again different relational operator available like less than is there, greater than is there, uh, greater than or equals to less than or equals to. One new operator is there that is the instance of operator that is used to check the instance of the operator. Now next operator, these are the bitwise operator. The what is the use of the bitwise operator? Uh, most probably, if you want to perform the operation like logical and or logical or or um, something like exclusive or type, so you can use this bitwise operator. So if you have some binary operation at that time, you can use this function that is a logical and logical or and exclusive or operator. Next is a logical operator. Uh, this logical operator is mostly uh, we are using in the condition type statement. Like suppose if you have a multiple condition is there in a if condition or in a if statement. Like suppose if you want to check uh, find out the maximum number from three number, so you can write or you can use this logical and operator like a greater than b and a greater than c. If both these condition will satisfy, then something will happen. So you can use this uh, operator at this type of situation. And the last uh, but not the least, these are the ternary and assignment operator. Ternary we can use as uh, in place of the if statement, like uh, question mark and colon. So if you have some expression like a greater than b question mark a, then if the condition is satisfied, then the, it will consider as a a as a output or colon b. Otherwise, it will consider as a b. And the lastly, that is the assignment operator. And if you want to assign the value to the variable, like a is equals to five, like b is equals to a, so you can use this type of statement uh, in which the assignment operator is used. So hope you understand all these operator uh, in the Java, and you can use in a program most probably this operator. I will explain you all these. Uh, operator in the detail with the example in my programming section so now our next topic that is the how to run a simple java program so i will explain you so how to write the simple program so for that the first thing we require that is the class and what is the class that i have already explained in my last video that is a concept of object oriented programming what is the class the class is a nothing but it is a collection of variable and methods. 
so now suppose if you want to write a program to print a simple hello in a command prompt so for that you need to use a class then name of the class then we are using a one main method so before we are writing just like in c and c plus plus we are writing just only void main but in java it is not enough we have to write down first of all public and static then void main and in the argument of the main function we are passing the string of the array now what is the use of the public static void main that i will explain in my next but first of all let's start with the uh, what will be the how to write this particular program to print the hello so in the main method you need to write down the system dot out dot print ln once again if you are talking about the c language you are using only the print f to print the whatever you are writing in a print f that you can print on it so for that you can use a system dot out dot print ln in a java to print the hello world. now just make sure whenever you are save this particular file you have to save this file with the name whatever the name of your class like in our program our class name is a hello world so you have to save this particular file name as a hello world dot java now after this saving this particular file how to compile this particular file so for that you need to use a command that is java c then name of the file dot java so you can see how to compile this particular file to java c then name of the file dot java and how to run this particular file after the successfully compiles if there is a no error in our program so one dot class file is created behind and how to run this particular program just write on the java and then only the name of the file just remember do not write dot java extension whenever you are executing the code so finally you got the output whatever you are written in the system dot out dot print ln method so that is the hello java so i will explain you in an x uh, what do you mean by public static void main so that is uh, what do you mean and why we are writing a public static void main in our program so here the public means it is an access specifier so again there are the uh, two access specifier i mean public and private to another uh, to uh, more access specifier the protected and default but i am talking about the today's lecture that is a, what do you mean by the public and private here you are right uh, suppose if you are right any uh, method beginning with the private that private means you are not accessible this data outside of the class but public means you can access the data in anywhere because uh, our java main program the main method the execution of the program is start from the main that's why this method is required as a public if you are not declaring this method is, uh, as a public the compiler will generate an error suppose if uh, someone uh, write private in place of the public then compiler will generate error because public main is required otherwise it will rise an error so public is a access specifier so that our main method is accessible to the anywhere next keyword that is the static keyword what is the use of the static keyword so static keyword it is a reserve keyword and which means that the method is accessible and usable even through no object of the classes exist means as i told in my last lecture uh, what do you mean by the object what is the use of the object so object use means what so whenever you want to access the data of the class you need to create the object of particular class so but here suppose if you are write a static in uh, before the method so you no need to create of that object of that particular class and because whenever you are run the java program first uh, we have only a one class so how to get the object of a particular main class so for that we require a, a static keyword and again if this keyword is required must if you are not writing a static keyword it will rise an error now next that is a void again the void is a declare as a nothing if you are not returning any value you can write just void and if you are returning something then you can write any other data type 
clear void means you are not retaining any value and the last that is our mean method so mean is required and whatever you are writing a curly braces the code will be executed hope you understand the system hope you understand the public city void mean and the next that is what do you mean by the system dot out dot print align here you can see that our system first letter s is a capital why it is capital because system it is an class it is a utility class and it is an inbuilt class it's not in user defined class so in a java just make sure whenever you are whenever you are calling any inbuilt class the first letter must be an capital so here the system s is a capital now here the out is the out is a nothing but it is a static object so as i told you whenever the static is used no need to create an object of that particular class so it is directly accessed is using the class name so that's why we are writing like system dot out so otherwise the, for just think about it it of out is not a static then you need to create the object of the system and then using the object you can call the out but in our case out is a static that's why we are calling like system dot out and print ln it is an method of the <coughs> stream class and you can use a print ln method to print anything onto the command prompt so hope you understand our simple program so if you want to run this particular program these are the small steps i will definitely ex uh, explain you how to run this particular program how to set the class path and what next uh, how to run this particular program as a practical in my programming section so this is the end of our today's lecture thank you very much if you have any doubt you can feel free to ask me thank you very much